I see extensive enterprises wanted extra accessories with their figures. Here's your look at new Super 7 G.I. Joe Ultimates Crimson Guard Elite Trooper. These are no mere Cobra Troopers. The Cobra Crimson Guard are the highly trained elite vanguard of Cobra forces and one of the most serious threats to G.I. Joe. This 7-inch highly articulated G.I. Joe Ultimate's Cobra Crimson Guard features detailed sculpting and premium paint detail based on the G.I. Joe animated series and comes with interchangeable heads and hands and multiple accessories. A squad of these made-to-order Crimson Guard Ultimates are domination. I don't know, is Zaymon and Tomax now enlisting the help of Super 7? While we try to figure that all out, let's take the tape measure and see how tall the brand new G.I. Joe Ultimates Crimson Guard stands. I actually found this over at Entertainment Earth. If you guys are interested, I can provide the link down below in the video description. That same link will save you 10% on anything that's currently in stock. The Crimson Guard is going to stand at 7 inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 18 centimeters tall. And to think, under all our noses, Cobra's been amassing a large army consisting of Cobra Troopers and Cobra Bats. Cobra Bats kind of also reminds me that we haven't really gotten much in the way of the 88 series run. A Cobra Viper would be ideal, or perhaps a Strato Viper. Leading them all into charge, of course, we got ourselves Major Blood, although Major Blood tends to only deal with more of the Cobra Troopers, not as much with the Crimson Guards. Sucks that we don't have any apples to chuck at it, but one of the included accessories with the Crimson Guard in a small, more harmless state is the germ, taken from the episode of the same name. The germ starts as Bacteria X in a growth serum, just happens to be these two test tubes right here. And when the two are dangerously mixed together, it creates this globulous mess. It starts, granted, small, but don't let its size fool you. It gets to the point where it starts overtaking entire cities. I think the G Joes realize that pectin may be the thing that defeats it, and they start chucking and shooting thousands of apples at this thing till finally it disintegrates. I think at one point, Airtight and a, and a Cobra Eel are battling inside the germ. I hope I can only describe that as good as the episode actually is. It's one of my favorite G.I. Joe episodes. But though in a small state like this, I kind of wish that this could have been done in a translucent plastic. But at least they've purple little bubbles there in lighter gray. you got some lighter pinks added in there as well. The fact that we are even talking about the germ as one of the included accessories. Thank you, Super 7. One of the other things that also come included with the Crimson Guard is a partially eaten donut. And as well, a mug of, I'm guessing, coffee. Perhaps it could even be uh, hot chocolate. Um... Probably not anything I'm really going to... I'm actually more excited for the fact that we get ourselves Bacteria X and the growth serum and the germ than I am a partially eaten donut and a coffee cup. Uh, when he also included accessories, as a reference that only maybe the casual fans will actually recognize is that we get ourselves the Fred Head. The Fred Head? Fred Braca was actually part of like the identical Cobra Agents project where they were starting to like just make clones, clone copies of Fred. We get ourselves Fred's Head. Now, the thing that's interesting about that, though, is I'm going to bring back in Duke. Uh, Duke we had brought in a couple of times earlier. It's a very similar style of head as what we get with Fred. Realizing I'm rhyming several times. Uh, I'm sure the glasses could come off. Actually, the glasses is one thing with Fred's head that you're going to have a hard time with. When you're putting it on top of the ball joint here, I find a couple of times this has happened where I, I put pressure here and not realizing it right away, I almost break the glasses off on Fred's head. Stop rhyming. One of the other included accessories, though, with the Crimson Guard is you get yourself an unmasked helmeted head sculpt. Nothing at all would be interesting me to uh, swap out the heads that he has. If you did want to see what it looks like, you just basically pop the head off the ball joint, replace it with the head that you want to use. So again, you've got the unmasked head. Kind of looks like someone you would see from Mortal Kombat. And of course, there's also Fred's head. But let's put back the superior head. We're going to be popping it back into place. Uh, of course, with the Crimson Guard, you can also get yourself some gripping hands. I, I've, or in preparation to getting this review started, I swapped the hands that he had out. The figure comes also included. Well, it comes with a trigger firing finger hand on this side. Stop pointing. It also comes with a hand for better holding the undercarriage of the gun. But if you did want to happen to have a trigger finger hand on this side, then they also include that as well. The figure also comes included with a pair of closed fists, like that, like those. And then he gets a couple of blasters. Now he gets the smaller pistol. Um, when you're looking at the figure too, and you're spinning them around, there is actually a place on the side. Uh, there's a hole right here. Now I thought for a second that that would be good for holding the pistol and yet it doesn't. Um, there's nothing really that I can see at least that's supposed to suggest why that, that hole is there unless there's a holster that came off and I'm just looking around in the packaging. I don't see the holster. If I happen to find that holster, I mean, we'll probably be coming back and revisiting that before we get to the final looks of the figure. I would imagine that there probably was a holster there at one point to accommodate the pistol. 
And I just don't happen to have it on the side of my figure's leg. Oh. One of the things, though, I least can say I have is more trademark kind of Crimson Guard gun. Notably by the fact it has the little blade on the bottom of it. Cast here in the black plastic, it's cast in the exact same black plastic as the pistol. Pew, pew, pew. And because I've already taken the liberty of swapping out the hands, you just easily take the gun and put it into his hand. And because he doesn't grant, grant unfortunately, have double hinges in his elbows, but he has more than enough if you want to hold the undercarriage of the gun with the other hand. Yeah, there you go. That's what the Crimson Guard would look like with that. Lastly, of all the things we've talked about, the figure does also come included. Not to remove his hand. Pop that back in place. There we go. Uh, the Crimson Guard also comes included with, speaking of trademark things, like no more trademark than this. The figure does also have his backpack. Now, with the original vintage toy, this would have only just been plugged on the back of the figure's torso with a hole there. Ow! This at least does have straps. A little less painful for the Crimson Guard. Just put his arms back like you're dressing a small toddler. How small are those toddlers that you dress? Probably not the size of a G.I. Joe figure. But basically, you're just going to bring the arms back like this, feed the straps up the arm like this, until finally you have this attached in place. You may want to even adjust the straps. I mean, obviously, it does add a little bit of extra things on the front of the figure's body. I mean, the original vintage toy would have only had this just plugged in place, but love the idea that they actually include the backpack. I would just feel really that the Crimson Guard was lacking something if he didn't have this. There's a Cobra symbol there right in the middle, nicely sculpted overall. It kind of reminds me of the Arena of Sports. I don't know why I always feel the need to reference the Arena of Sports. Let's just move the arms back down here just so we can get this off. I, again, I'm like looking around here. I don't see a holster. I'm going to have to even go back and check when I was first unboxing this guy. Maybe the holster was supposed to be there. It came off. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm going to have to go back and review the footage again. Anyways, though, while I'm wondering the whereabouts, though, of that holster, let's get a closer look at the defaulted head sculpt for the Crimson Guard. Ideally, it could be really anybody underneath that head, whether it's a Fred head or not. I overall like the head, although I do kind of feel like the front of the face is a little bit bulbous. I feel like it should be a little bit smaller in size. I don't know. Something's proportionally throwing things off for me. It's fairly cartoon accurate for what it is. Of course, you got the little blue highlights there, the accents there on the top of the helmet. Some blue accents also added there to the front of its chest. It's a step certainly up from the traditional Cobra Trooper, which I just happened again to bring back in the Cobra Trooper. It's buried by debris. There you, go. you guys can see again, like the Cobra Trooper was a very more simple blue costumed character for Cobra Commander. Uh, the Crimson Guard certainly more the elite. I hope though we are going to be getting a Tomac, a Tomax, and Zamot. Obviously, those to the Crimson Guards to lead the Cobra Troopers. Cobra symbol there is nicely printed there on the front. Uh, you have this one little thing on the side that would be like also what it would have in the cartoon. It's just sort of, I don't know what you would call it, just like a little bit of roping that's on the side of its shoulders. You want to really be careful when it comes to rotating his arms around. A couple of times I've done this where when I went to move the arm out, I kind of clipped this with my thumb and thought for a second, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I wanted to make sure I don't pull that off in the process. You want to make sure you're doing that as well. It's not molded actually to the body. It's a separate floating piece. Just be careful of that. Of course, the belt is also something else down below that is a separate piece from the rest of his body. Nice color overall for the colors for the red. I mean, you got the blue there panel lined on the side. All those very accurate to the way it looked in the cartoon. I also like that they sculpted this in and just didn't feel the need to rush in a few painted in lines. They actually sculpted it, and that's a nice little touch. How about the figure's articulation, though? While, of course, the germ is in the background. Let's move everything out of the way here. The head sculpt is going to be on a ball joint, so it rotates the head all the way around. You don't have to do it as slow as I'm doing right now. The head looks down that far and looks up. You can also move it back and forth as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. As for the arms, again, just be careful of the roping on the side here. This one arm rotates all the way around. Would you also believe? Yeah, this other arm rotates around the exact same way. It also hinges out. Um, I would also be amiss to not mention the fact that this that does also have a little cobra patch there on the sides of his arm. Nice little touch. And actually, when you bring the arm up like this, it connects to that of the shoulder. I'm sure it's just intentional. The, there's a swivel, of course, in the bicep, a swivel there as well, a single hinge, which again, I know a lot of people just don't like the idea that they put single hinges. They really need to put double hinges on these elbows. They keep saying, we're, we're doing it for seamless bodies, seamless bodies, bunny ears, bunny ears. I think it's just a way to actually save the cost of not producing a figure with double hinges in the elbows. I mean, with this, with a single hinge, at least it does the job that it needs to do. But if you are one that's a stickler for double hinges on the elbows, you're going to be really disappointed that this guy doesn't have it. And really, like all the G.I. Joe Ultimate figures don't have them either. Uh, there's a swivel there in the forearm, a swivel in the hand that hinges back and forth as well. Upper torso is going to be on a ball joint. This has happened to me a couple of times. It's not broken. It seems to pop off frequently from this ball joint. And I don't know why. Every time I keep the popping it back in a place. I think it's maybe if you just move the torso far too far back, 
that seems to be the thing that always pops off the ball joint. At least it's something that's serviceable and fixable. Just pop it back onto the ball joint. But again, now you've got the ball joint right there. Legs split out. They're on hinge joints. You can take the legs and move forward. You can move them back. There's a swivel there at the top of the thigh. Single hinge knee. Lower lower rotation. Not really all that much there. But he does have an ankle pivot back and forth and a nice ankle rocker there as well. You know, I, again, like I like so far what we're seeing here with the uh, the Cobra Troopers, but I can't help but feel like really the Cobra Bat seems so now out of place because of course we got ourselves the Cobra Trooper and we got ourselves now the Crimson Guard, both from like the more earlier runs of GI Joe, and all of a sudden like smack dab in there, like one of the earliest waves, we got ourselves a Cobra Bat. I feel like we need to get some of the later '80s characters. You know, like a Dr. Mindbender, like a Serpentor, someone along to go with the bat, because I just feel like the bat is at a place right now in my shelf. These two characters work well in, together. Of course, the Crimson Guard and the Cobra Trooper are all ones that would kind of inhabit the world of G.I. Joe during the early 80s run of the car cartoon episodes. But then you got the Cobra Bat. It just seems so out of place. Speaking of Cobra Troopers, though, I mean, now that we have ourselves three, other ones I would write fairly high up on my list would be like a Televiper. I like, would love to get a Televiper. A Viper would be all like one of my all-time favorite Cobra Troopers. Even like a Strato Viper would be fun as well. What are the Cobra Vipers or Cobra Troopers would you guys like, also like to see from Super 7? Let me know down below in the comments section. But though for the Crimson Guard, all in all, not a bad looking figure. I feel like he didn't necessarily need some of the accessories that he has. I mean, like, I don't know anybody that would probably say to themselves, I need to have the masked, unhelmeted head sculpt, or even like Fred's head for that matter, which again, just kind of for me, like looks like Duke. Would they have need, ne necessarily need to include that? No, but, but the saving grace in all this is the fact that they actually include the germ. That's one of my favorite accessories we've gotten so far from the Super 7 G.I. Joe's line. As we now jump over, whoa, 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 what are you doing with Bacteria X? Don't you know you're going to grow a germ of city size? Well, the Crimson Guard is making poor choices in life. One poor choice, unfortunately, was taking this guy out of his plastic prison and not realizing right away that he was missing his leg holster. Thinking it was first going to be black, I looked online and it looks like it's a little loop of red plastic, very similar to the plastic that they molded for his leg. I, I would imagine that that's the thing that holds his pistol in place. Unfortunately, though, mine is missing. I say that now until, look, until I look at the footage that I've recorded earlier and realize that maybe he came out of the packaging and I may have banged it. If that's the case, I'm going to have to comb the area all around my camera here to see if I can find that little bit of plastic. No harm, no foul. I mean, it's not necessarily going to be something I'm going to display with the figure. It bothers me more so the fact that there's that little square peg that's now missing there. I mean, obviously, if you have picked up this figure for yourself, let me know if yours is also there or if yours is missing too. The character does come include some decent accessories, some of which, though, I mean, it generally is the lay of the land when these Super 7 releases that it's fine to look at things and say, oh, cool, he comes with a donut. Oh, that's neat. He comes with a cup of coffee. Will I ever really display a Crimson Guard with either of those things? No. What I will, though, display him with is the germ. Small in size, but don't, again, let his size fool you. G.I. Joe's have to beat it with apples. I, I know I've kind of given away the episode. I mean, to be fair, the episode came out in the early 80s. I don't think by now. I, a spoiler. I think we've passed past that area of spoiler uh, territory. But yeah, if you guys wanted to check that out, one of my favorite G.I. Joe episodes, they battle a germ with giant uh, with apples. Uh, if I, by the way, though, if uh, one thing you guys are interested in is to get your hands on the Crimson Guard here, I did actually find this one at Entertainment Earth. Same place that I grabbed also uh, Major Blood and also Roadblock. So if you guys are interested, the stock is available, I think, on all of these. The only one I haven't yet picked up is CoverGirl. I don't think Entertainment has it yet, but I keep checking back to their site. And when they do, I will also be ordering CoverGirl as well. What do you guys think of uh, Crimson Guard? Let me know down below in the comment section. If you are also an avid G.I. Joe fan, what other Cobra Troopers would you like to see Super 7 release next? I already say like Viper. Viper by far is my favorite, but I think they could also have a little bit of fun with a Televiper where you'd be able to remove, remove the goggles and have different words on the front of it. I think that'd be a fun release. If you guys did enjoy this video, do a solid though. Throw it a like. You guys want to stick around for more so? I hope so. Even if you're inside of a germ or not throwing apples at it, I hope you guys are certainly going to be coming back to this channel, keeping your peepers peeled at all times. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.